How are you, James Carville, different here than you were in D.C.? I, I don't know. I, I think I'm, uh, it's probably just a little more comfortable. It may seem odd to think of Democratic tough guy James Carville anywhere but Washington. I think I always knew I wanted to come home. Or Republican stalwart Mary Madeline. It's a great, warm place. People this far outside the Beltway. This house is full of love. They still keep a house near D.C., but now they call New Orleans home. The Ragin' Cajun is now Professor Carville, teaching politics at Tulane University. Jesse James sent me a telegram last month saying he'd kill me if he had to wreck a train to do it. He also takes on the occasional movie role. That's him as a Western governor in a movie about Jesse James. I'm saying his sins will soon find him out. I'm saying his cup of iniquity is full. You That's have mischaracterized and you have lied about every position in every particular... But Carville and wife Mary Madeline... How are you going to pay for this? ...are best known for playing themselves. They have this elitist, I'm disgusting, sorry. despicable... I'm sorry. ...taking opposing viewpoints on the political talk show circuit. I'm not having this conversation with him, John. Or the short-lived HBO series, K Street. And you all need to grow up, all of you. So it might come as a surprise that here at home, they live in harmony most of the time. What's the number one thing you fight about? The air conditioning, house, uh, you know, we don't, the kids, not at all. Money? A little bit, a little bit, like most people. We don't really fight. We're not good fighters. We're kind of pout or passive aggressive. And I think the reason for that is if we actually, either of us, get into our fight mode, given our experience and our skill sets, we are so vicious, we turn into a different person. And they were vicious indeed during the 92 campaign. In Governor Bill Clinton's corner, James Carville. Yes, let me tell you what's at stake in this election. The fiery political genius who knew where President George H.W. Bush was vulnerable. He is, he is so yesterday, if I think of yesterday, if I think of an old calendar, I think of George Bush's face on it. We are going to hit him hard, legitimately. And in the Bush camp, Deputy Campaign Chief Mary Madeline. And we got a very good bulldog doing that in Mary Madeline. I am saying it is vintage Clinton the one they counted on to come out swinging against Bill Clinton. If we cannot believe anything he has said about his past, how can we believe anything he's saying about the future? But even as Madeline denounced Clinton, she was romantically involved with Carville, whom she'd met in D.C. a year earlier. Well, it wasn't really a date. I don't know what we were. It was something. First meeting. It was vodka and french fries, that's all I remember. And I was struck. Stayed struck, M struck. <laughs> they couldn't have been more different. Madeline was from the south side of Chicago. Carville from rural Louisiana. And he was, by all accounts, a real handful. I mean, I was bad. <laughs> bad? How, so how bad? I'm bad? I mean, not going to class, drinking, gambling, everything you can think of. Everybody. Don't you say you graduated with a 4.0? That's my own graduation day at 4.0. It was my blood alcohol level. <laughs> By the time of the 1992 campaign, the Carville Madeline romance was pretty well known, though they said it was on hold until after Election Day. There's been so many reports of a romantic attachment between you and Mr. Carville. Still, people wondered. Doesn't that give the impression that this is all make-believe if you have that kind of personal relationship with Mr. Carville? Bob, this is absurd. That is the most sexist swine, and I'm not calling you a sexist swine because I know you're only reporting what is out there, but I think the media does not know how to cover what is an unprecedented uh, relationship. And then, of course, his candidate won. Talk about your mixed emotions. The American people have voted to make a new beginning. Talk about 92, Mary, and how you were devastated. I love Poppy Bush. I love him to this day, and it was very personal. It's complicated because your partner, meanwhile, is on this trajectory while you're feeling so low. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, it's, it was yeah. really, really depressing, but he was really doing great, and I was really in love. And it just, they 
fought against each other and the, the good side won. I stayed in, in love instead of in darkness. They were married a year later, Thanksgiving Day, 1993, in New Orleans. In the years that followed, Carville grew more prominent in Democratic politics. Madeline became a trusted advisor in the GOP. When Vice President Dick Cheney was rushed to a secret location during the horror of the 9-11 attacks, she was by his side. The couple and their two daughters, Emma and Maddie, were such a part of Washington, D.C. that some were shocked when they all moved down to New Orleans in 2008. It's a work in progress. The house is a 1905 mansion decorated to die for. Simon. The two girls are off to school now. Come here, kitty. Oh, but the nest is hardly empty. They're free to come and go, yes, yes. as long as they stay away from James. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't want to know their names. He doesn't. They are the devil incarnate to him. Is this home now? Oh, yeah. These days, it seems the only animals Carville can tolerate are the political ones. But he says he doesn't miss Washington, D.C. one bit. I'm, I'm really happy here. That's all I can say. I mean, much else I can add to it. Happier than you think you've been at any other point in your life? Yeah, I think so. More sat and satisfied. And I, but, but I think satisfied that, that, with? Just where my life is. But I don't think I could have done it without doing the things I did. <laughs> Carville's famously frantic personality got him lampooned on Saturday Night Live. I mean, look at the front runner, Mitt Romney. I mean, I know Romney looks like a president, but we don't always get the job we look right for. If we did, I'd be the king of the snakes. <laughs> but a few years into their marriage, Madeline says it wasn't so funny. So he was bugging you before? He's very hyper, can you tell? Or very impatient. And he could not understand <clears throat> why I was feeling so detached from him all the time, or so unheard. Things changed when a doctor, observing James Carville at an airport, approached him and said he suspected Carville had an attention deficit disorder. So I'm pretty sure, you know, I've been looking at you the last five minutes, and I'm pretty sure you got a real case of ADHD watching <laughs> you. And so we went through the whole thing and then diagnosed me as being Ta -da, ADHD. Surprise. And, you know, started talking about medication and everything, and I, you know, we talked about it, and I built a life around it and kind of didn't want to change. Having something confirmed, I guess, was to some extent liberating. And it does make for quite a story. The couple recently collaborated on a book about their marriage, moving to New Orleans, and raising their two daughters. They're both still in politics, but after more than two decades, the Carville Madeline home is one place where it seems no spin is needed. It feels good. I love to walk into places and have, like, what I think is, like, the, the pretty smartest wife in town. It, it doesn't, I, I kind of enjoy that. Thank <laughs> to you. Tell you the truth. Thank you. <laughs> what do I see in him? What do I love most? He loves. He loves us.